the the way we interact with the ocean and with the world is insane because we behave as if we had another planet and we don't My name is Daniel Pauli. I'm a professor of fisheries at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. I think the big, the biggest change in the ocean has happened already um, 40, 40, 30 years ago. The massive industrialization of fishing throughout the world. Uh, some countries like the UK and uh, France and so on uh, industrialized the fisheries already in at the end of the 19th century and in the beginning of the 20th century it spread in the North Atlantic and North Asia around Japan and so on but after World War II it spread throughout the world industrialization of fisheries the industrial catching of fish and the industrial catching of fish was extremely successful and, uh, and it led to an increase in catches of, of fish from all over the place. Uh, but in, uh, in 96, to be precise, the, the world catch started declining in spite of our effort to catch more. We are scraping the bottom of the sea, right? Uh, but the big change, the reduction of the of the abundance of all fish as has already occurred in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Um, the, we are chasing the last remnants of the, of the big fish. Now there are, there are fewer fish in the water, it must be said. Uh, if, you, if you look at a, a body of water like like the Firth of Firth or whatever they call it in, in Scotland. Yeah, the Firth of Forth. There, if you look at uh, accounts of, of fishing in there, uh, it was full of huge fish uh, 100 years ago, 150 years ago. It was full of huge fish. And the biomass, the, the amount of fish that you found there was immense. Now, they ask, there is essentially not one fish. Well, all you find is scumpy. The modification of the habitat that ha that has occurred in uh, in Europe, for example, around the UK, is tremendous, and most people don't don't believe it uh, because because uh, they are not familiar with this older literature the, of 120 years ago. When a, a young scientist and a fisheries scientist or marine biologist start his or her study, now. They look at data only 20 years ago. They don't look at data 120 years ago. And because of that, they cannot imagine the amount of fish that was there. I call this shifting baseline syndrome, right? Shifting baseline. Young people know only about 20 years. And if they listen to their parents, which they usually don't, they will, I, have put years of stories that they believe about the world, uh, how the world was. But it, 40 years ago, the big stocks of fish were already wiped out. So, so basically, if you reestablish, you want to reestablish the world as it was 40 years ago, you you would not recover anything, because 40 years ago, the, the great stocks of fish, the great stock of whales, they were already gone. The number of whales in the sea, of different whales, were reduced in two waves of extermination. One in the 18th century, the Boston whaler, when, when we were using whale oil, uh, the sperm whales and so on, um, for illumination in, in London, for example, for street lighting and so on. That was one phase of uh, the extermination of the great whale. And the second phase uh, is especially after World War II, uh, where the Soviet Union and Japan went into a spree of destruction, in, especially in the North Atlantic. Uh, uh, the result of this is that uh, 
you you end up with zombie species, species that are still around as in the, as individuals, but do not play the same ecological role they played before. For example, the right whales uh, in, the, in the North Atlantic, they are, I think, 200 specimens uh, left. They cannot, uh, with 200 specimens, they cannot impact the, the ecosystem the way they did when they were 200,000. So we are exterminating one group after the other or reducing it to a small level that is not commercially uh, worth to exploit. We have done that to the great whales. We have done that for essentially everything. The oceans are enormously important in mitigating climate change because they have absorbed up to now um, the bulk of the carbon dioxide that is emitted by our industry and our transports and, and so on, which otherwise would have heat, heated the, the atmosphere far more than presently. In other words, the oceans serve as an enormous buffer for carbon dioxide and also for heat. Uh, the, the ocean can store much more heat than the atmosphere. So if we didn't have the ocean, we would already have a, a burning earth. I, 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 at the risk of being boring, I think the only thing, the main thing that we have to do is reduce CO2 emissions. Uh, the rest is dancing and 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 evoking uh, invoking the gods and hoping for something to happen. Uh, basically, if we don't reduce emission, we will be in deep doo doo. And and that that there is no getting around that. I'm an old guy, and old guys, uh, besides being grumpy, have experienced positive things. The optimism that I have is that we usually cannot anticipate change before it happens. And then when it happens, it looks obvious. And I, I hope that something will come up that challenge the way we do things in time to avoid a catastrophe. I cannot imagine it now, but I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I hope it's going to happen.